right now on the Chevy Silverado Celebrity Hotline. His name starts with an S, and it ends with an S. And between it, it's a lot of love. Slovis. There he is. Keenan Slovis joining us on the Pedersen and Money Show after carving up the Slovis. UCLA Bruins right here on your Bruins station. Right in front of Greasy. Cut him to ribbons. Right. Oh, right in front of poor Chip Kelly. It all happened, and he's been really slinging that rock all year long. Ever since the very first game, Slovis came in. Slovis. And took charge. Damn right. Half a thousand yards in the rivalry. Last year, we were interviewing Joshua Kelly after a great performance. Broke records. This year, the record breaking. Flip the script. Was Slovis. Other team through the air. And man, was it impressive. He joins us now on the Petterson Money Show for the very first time ever. Keaton Slovis. That's right. What's cracking, Slovis? How are you? Good. Thanks for having me, guys. I love the energy. Oh, come on. We got to have it. Now, speaking of energy, Slovis. what is this week like for you guys? Because you don't know, obviously, if you're going to play. Utah is a favorite to, to beat Colorado, but Colorado just took out Washington. Uh, what's your week like? Uh, you guys working out? You practicing? What's the deal? Yeah, we got a you know, we got meetings in practice this week. Uh, obviously, a little weird, uh, weird, little weird deal with uh, Thanksgiving this week and with uh, a bye week at the end of the year. But um, again, we're just preparing like we have a chance to play Oregon. Uh, obviously, um, you know we hope that works out. But uh, we'll play whoever we got next on the schedule. What um, What do you remember, or what can you tell us about your first experience from the uh, the rivalry game? What did it feel like out there, and and what was that buzz like for you? Uh, it was really cool. It was awesome, awesome atmosphere. Um, it's great to have a lot of people in the Coliseum. Um, and, you know, it was uh, obviously a high-energy game between both teams, but, you know, it was, it was awesome. And, and to hear from my parents, who it was their first time in the rivalry, but they were talking about the tailgating scene and how, how cool of an atmosphere it was before oh, yeah. the game. So I was really happy they could witness that, too. You always hear uh, when new receivers come in or a new quarterback has to, you know, backup quarterback has to come in, the, the time that it takes to develop chemistry with receivers does not seem like you needed much time at all to develop chemistry with your receivers. Walk us through kind of how all of you have managed to get on the same page so quickly and throughout the course of this season. Yeah, I think a lot of that is just the talent level that we have outside at receiver. Um, you know, those guys, all four of them, and even the guys behind them are so talented that, uh, you know, it makes my job a lot easier. So, um, I mean, a lot of people talk about timing and get on the same page, but I think a lot of that's just, just them adjusting and them doing such a great job. Keaton Slovis joining us on the Petros and Money Show after such a big game that they put him on the Petros and Money Show. You know, you really got to. You had to earn it. I mean, you really got to do it. You really got to throw it around the like year. 500 plus or he ain't coming if, on. If you know what I'm saying. And and today a big announcement. Uh, one of the, the finalists for the Bolitnikoff is Michael Pittman. Uh, you really delivered the ball to him. Uh, more than anybody else in, in the history of USC, uh, getting a receiver, uh, the Rock. What, what's it like playing with that guy as he is a team captain? Yeah, no, I can't say enough good things about Pitt. Um, you know, he's such, not only is he such a great teammate and, and leader, but, you know, he really took me under his wing um, since I got here. Um, and that's not easy to do from, from a 22-year-old kid. So, um, you know, for him to take someone who was a younger guy and, and kind of show him the ropes and, and show him how to do things, and, and to also take the other receivers under, under his wing, too. It's not just me. Uh, he does it with everyone. So you see a guy like Drake London emerge, um, and that's a lot uh, due, be, due because of uh, a Pitt and what he's done to, to be a leader towards, uh, towards him and me. Now, Keaton, what a, I mean, we started hearing uh, about you and, and the possibility of where you might end up on the depth chart in spring, and it was kind of Graham Harrell that, that had mentioned how impressed he was, your work ethic, um, and just kind of your ability to overcome the situation and, and not be affected by it at all despite your age. Um, what did they tell you when you came in? Because obviously JT had played last year as a true freshman, and what the possibility might be that you find yourself in this situation. Yeah, um, obviously with a new system and a new coach, you know, everyone kind of had a clean slate going to spring ball. So um, the w one thing they told all of us was, you know, just come in and compete and, uh, you know, the things will fall in line from there. And that was the biggest thing I kind of took, took away from that was, you know, just go out and do your best and, you know, the chips will fall where they will. Um, you know, you don't have really any control of what they think of you. So uh, just go play your best and uh, things will kind of fall where they should. The uh, the air raid, if that's what you want to call it, is not something we're used to seeing at, at USC. Um, was it something you were used to from high school, or, or what were you doing in high school compared to what they asked of you to do here? Uh, yeah, my, my high school offense was, uh, was a very strict, I guess it was pro-style spread, but it wasn't anything like this. Um, but it's been a lot of fun. I really love playing in the air raid. Um, I love playing for Coach Harrell. It's, it's a 
different offense than I've ever played in, but it's probably the most fun um, I've ever had playing football. Um, you know, you kind of simplify things for you, and you know, you, you're not really thinking. You're just going out and playing and executing, and it's a uh, it's been a, been a lot of fun. A lot of the talk just watching a USC game on TV is about your head coach, uh, Clay Helton, and what his future is going to be. What, what's it like being a, a leader, especially a young leader, on a football team where you're getting asked questions about the head coach all the time, every time almost that you're on uh, with the media? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely different than anything I'm used to. But um, I think the biggest thing, and with ev- anything really, not just specific to this, but there's a lot of noise, uh, you know, outside of this program, and especially being in the L.A. area. Um, I think we're kind of unique um, as USC as a program to having a lot of media attention to us. So, um, you know, we kind of have to tune out the noise a bit and just focus on us, and I think we've done a good job of that throughout this year. I know it's been uh, asked a lot, and it's been described, you know, many times, but it's never been done on the Petros and Money show before, Keaton. So if you could walk us through how you ended up, at USC, um, what other schools recruited you? Why maybe the Arizona schools? You you grew up in Scottsdale, went to Desert Mountain High there. How they didn't happen to extend an offer to you, and and who ended up finding you from USC to bring you here? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I I was obviously under recruited a little bit. Uh, didn't start until my junior year of high school, um, but eventually got a few smaller offers. Then my first offer was from like Hawaii, um, but eventually a few. Power five schools offered me NC State was the first, then Oregon State. But ASU um, went to practice, didn't didn't offer me. They told me they liked me and all, but um, you know they same with Arizona, but they didn't didn't extend an offer. And then I guess the story is that Brian Ellis, the quarterbacks coach um, last year, um, just happened to be in the area and knew that we had a few previous players, Mark Andrews and Kyle Allen, um, that were good at DM at my high school. So he kind of stopped by just to visit visit coach um, Seb Mack, my head coach at the time, and. I just see who he had, and then I guess coach showed him my film, and then he it prompted him to come back next next Monday, and then they offered me that. It's a Cinderella story, and he's joining us on the Pedros and Money Show right now, live at the BJ's Restaurant and Brew House in Downey. Slovis, the quarterback, Slovis for the USC Trojans. All right, you don't have to worry; these aren't these aren't tough questions. Uh, the, these will be of a lighter fare, so don't worry. Uh, but. Uh, let got, your guard down. Yeah, yeah. There we yeah. go. Uh, where have you been in right. Los Angeles? You know, you showed up in the spring. Uh, I, I think you were around most of the summer. Uh, obviously, the season is a very busy time, especially for the starting quarterback at USC, like you said. Where have you been in L.A.? Have you been downtown? Have you been to the Valley? Have you been to Orange County? Have you ever been to Downey? That's where we are right now. Tell us, Keaton. Um, so I've been to Orange County. My roommate okay. from Laguna Hills, so I visited there a bit. Um, okay. I have been downtown. I've been to a few beaches here and there, uh, South okay. Bay. So you've uh, seen the ocean. That's good. Think, yeah, you got to see the ocean, you know. That's why I came out here. Um, yeah. I don't think I've ever been to Downey. But I, don't, I don't think I know where that is either, so I may be wrong. It's a gateway city. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not very far. It is. It's between L.A. and Orange County. That's the best thing we can say okay, for you. I'm it's straight sure, sure up the 105 time. and you're here. It's beautiful, and you awesome. can't believe the deep dish pizza here. Okay, other question. What's with your hair, like, as far as, like, you take your helmet off and your hair. It's perfect. It looks the same, yeah. Uh, what's going on? What do you? Has it always been that way, or is there something you found, or did you make some sort of deal with the devil? Why does your hair like that? <laughs> no, I don't know. I guess it's just luck. I, I kind of thought it was messed up after the game yesterday. Um, I was trying to get someone to get me a hat, but it didn't work out. So, I don't know. It just, just falls the way it does sometimes, you know? That's a nice, nice natural part. You're very lucky there. Doesn't look like there's product in there either. No. It looks very natural. No. All right. I'm good. I'm good. No, not You're much good? product. Yeah. All right. I feel like I'm good. All right. We're good. We're really happy for you, Keaton, and have a great – oh, are you going to buy a Colorado hat or wear like a Buffalo head during the game? What do you, what do you have planned? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Maybe I, I need to find some, some Colorado gear and, and rep it around town tomorrow, or this week, I guess. <laughs> yeah, why not? All right, how about this? One idea. last one. Here we go. Before we let you go, because we're going to be talking to St. John Bosco head coach Jason Negro here, and we got a big one on Saturday night here in Southern California. I know you're going to be concentrating on Utah, Colorado, but will you pay attention to number one versus number two, modern day versus Bosco high school football in Southern California Saturday night? Um, yeah, I guess so. Um, I know there's a lot of kids from my high school or from from their high school now that played there so there's always a lot of talk in the locker room of what's going to happen uh in that game so i'm sure someone will have it on and i'll i'll be around to watch it 
It's not like Brophy versus Chandler, I guess, you know. Sorry, Slovis. Uh, <laughs> no, it's have... not as big time as that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no bro, when, Brophy, when the Brophy bros straight take the field, you know, everybody pays attention to the desert. Thank you so much, Keaton, and congratulations on all your success. You've been tough and nails and, as nails and a lot of fun to watch. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Thanks for having me. There he goes. Slovis. Keaton Slovis. 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 Slovis.